Hey, how's it going? As always, it is Nate Mumford, Director of Sales Engineering here with the Martin Blazik, our Zeta Product Manager. How's it going, Martin? Good morning, everyone. Doing Welcome well? Welcome to the RCS Live show. As you know, we're here live every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern, and you can always check replays of our videos over on our archive right here over at rcsworks.com slash rcs dash live as always martin we always like to kind of talk about some uh, housekeeping first so that's going to be essentially talking about our beta users right we've been saying for forever if you want to be on the latest and greatest including zeta 521.1 which was beta for a very long time you're watching these rcs lives you know exactly all these brand new features but we're always looking for beta users for g selector and zeta if you're curious about becoming a beta user let us know we'll point you in the right direction over there uh, don't forget to check your backups as always just your friendly reminder to check your backups make sure they're working on there and again our feature friday over on our facebook page as well if you want to be featured as part of our featured friday let us know and we can include you in that as well uh martin is here gracing us with his presence and his knowledge for brand new features in zeta 521.1 and of course if you have any questions or comments you can check in with us over here so v's checking in good morning v and that way we can uh martin can answer them live in real time with uh live in real time there you go so martin uh let's just kick it off get right into it because we have a lot of really cool features we want to showcase here and the brand new version of zeta 521.1 just reminding everybody this version is officially released so if you want to get it you can reach out to rcs support and schedule an upgrade time and again you can uh you know take a look at these brand new features which are really really cool so I thought we'd just kind of pick some of our highlights here and have Martin kind of go through. And so, Martin, do you want to kind of first introduce this version at all and kind of some behind the scenes of, um, you know, what this overall, what this version is? Yeah, absolutely. And thank you. And good morning, everybody again. Um, Martin here. Uh, well, uh, 521.1, that's another big version uh, that we released, you know, 520. Uh, dot one was a huge release. This is another pretty, pretty big one. And then uh, you can tell simply by looking at this release notes document it has 20 plus pages. So, um, you know, we decided to use this document. Uh, it's kind of a quick walk through uh, this, this presentation today, um, because it's something you actually have access to. If you have Zeta, we provide you with uh, our release notes and uh, we try to cram in plenty of useful information. So especially, you know, it's, uh, you know, good chunk of the document is uh, consumed by uh, just enumerating all the defects and fixes we've done. But, you know, first few pages just covers uh, uh, functionality, new features, enhancements to existing functionality. And so we wanted to uh, kind of go through these and uh, share that with, uh, with users and anybody who's really interested in Zeta. Absolutely. So um, do you just want to go through the list and we'll just kind of showcase some features? Yeah. Yeah, by all means. And, and um, as we said, we have our chat open here. So we're live on YouTube and Twitch and Periscope uh, and Facebook and all that good stuff. So you want to check in, let us know, like uh, Sam or Jeff, if you want to check in, uh, ask some questions for Martin. We are here to help. So go ahead, Martin. So one of the big things in this version, and you will see it throughout the document, we'll not cover these items individually, is it constantly, there are many, many mentions of optimizations in, in many areas. And this was, you know, it can always make the product uh, better by making it faster, smoother. So there are a lot of optimizations and and, and the, the, usually the bigger the system, the, the more obvious the enhancements are. So on a fairly reasonably small system, you know, the system <clears throat> that I was really performing pretty good, but you know, as, as the system grows, certain things can get a little bit slower. So we, we try to focus on those. And so that specific area is covered and mentioned many times in this document. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to, you know, spend too much time digging into it, but I did want to mention it that plenty of effort went into just speeding things up, making things run faster and smoother. And uh, that has been undone, you know, in a, over a dozen areas. Uh, what we do want to cover and show you guys, and I want to make sure you see my screen, Dave. Do you do? Yeah, you do. Yes, you're good. Wonderful. Um, we do want to go through uh, uh, f functionality. So like I said, the first few pages of this document that we provide to customers uh, focus on new features, enhancements to existing functionality. Things that are worth mentioning, we call them major highlights because that's what they are. Yeah. So, um, and in these major highlights, I highlighted about 10 or 12 items 
uh, that we want to cover on this presentation. Those are in yellow. So you don't see the yellow items in your version of the document. That's just for <laughs> that's just for this morning. Okay. Uh, so you know we'll see in configuration screen, for example, we've redesigned or added the filtering capabilities to those columns. And so we've been doing that to many, many grids throw configurations where you can just use filtering for searches. If you have many stations, if you have many flat file assignments, for example, yeah. um, it's it's much easier to navigate those now because you can easily filter and search through those grids. So that's something we've been adding to more and more and more windows, and this version is no exception. Uh, and, and, that, and flat file configuration and station configuration are some of the good examples. Um, of that. Um, let's uh, continue scrolling. Oh, this is just more of backend stuff, like a technic te technical requirements of .NET <laughs> framework. And uh, here's a first fairly large enhancement on GPIO. And if you use GPO functionality, that I may apply to you, because we introduced many new uh, GPO output events. That means GPIO can produce these little triggers, the, what we call them mm -hmm. GPOs, tied to certain activity, uh, specifically in sequencer. So that's all of these uh, sequencer events from when events start or is paused or has five seconds left. So we can newly tie these GPOs to sequencer specific activity. You specify a station, uh, you specify the type of activity you care about, and then you can spit out a certain GPO as a result of that activity. And that GPO can now use many new uh, variables. Uh, so, and I, again, these are enumerated here in the section, uh, you know, airtime, uh, child count, child index. So if you have a spa block, you have multiple events within a spa block, and you care to know every time a child event within a spa block starts, and you care to know which child is the ch child three out of five, you can do it through these variables. So it's 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 a long list of variables. We've already had many, and so we just extended that list. And so this is all documented in the in the help file. But obviously, in the release notes, we still show, want to show you this. That this has been done, and these are the newly added variables. So to Absolutely. be specific, uh, if you go to computer configuration and you go to uh, GPIO, uh, GPO output step. I have this massive mm -hmm. uh, event started, GPO defined here. I can see the text here on the right-hand side of the window and notice uh, it's, it's a mix of a static text followed by many variables uh, that we support. And so I try like to dump many of them, most of them into this one, one message. And so when an event starts, this GPO gets generated, but these variables are actually populated with the actual values. If you care to know about a, a station name, station grid, event start time, stop time, local, or uh, or um, mm. UTC, it's all uh, it's all in here. And so, uh, to give a specific example, I'm going to use this little utility we ship. Um, it's uh, it has many uses, but one of the uses is actually to it's an external utility that can capture uh, the GPOs. You know, external external utility mm -hmm. that captures what GPO manager sends to external systems, consoles, whoever wants to consume these these GPOs. And so I have this utility set up for that to uh, monitor uh, uh, GPO activity over UDP. So if I fire an event and we go to that utility, look, there's this big chunk of text. Yep. And notice on the right-hand side of this text, you see all the variables uh, were applicable, populated with uh, information such as, um, well, this is not a spa block, so child in information is not popular. If we had a spa block, we see that. We see station name, station grid. Uh, we see uh, uh, log given grid. We see start times, predicted stop time, uh, et cetera. So it's a, it's a good chunk of, uh, of, of, of information that you can uh, consume and uh, do whatever you need to do with it. And it's GPIO, so it's intended for low latency as well. So yeah. um, uh, that's uh, so cool that's really, yeah, it's it's for engineering uh, primarily. But I wanted yeah. to mention this because we that's something we've been doing and adding over the years, and I um, just wasn't sure if uh, if our users are aware of it. The next feature, right, right, right. yep, makes sense. Is again on the backend side. Um, if uh, you know, we have this live metadata 
to send out information about what's what's playing, what's coming up, what are the future events. Now, while in Yulia, you can also include information about um, uh, notes or or scripts. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we have this option here, include even text, include event script, and uh, you have a choice if you want to include it, and if so, in what format. So if there's any note tied to a song coming from G Selector, maybe, mm. and you want to include it in your, uh, not live, but today, not previously known as also uh, an outplaying export or a billboard, if you want to include G Selector notes or scripts from uh, Acid and Zeta, you totally can do that now. And you can even choose the format. That's a really cool one. You can get a lot of, you get creative with that one. Yep, yep totally. Yep. Going further, we completely redesigned. This is a nice feature. This is really useful for anybody who deals with content, imports new audio into Zeta. Completely redesigned media import tool. Uh, we added ability to set kill date, activation category, start date, our end date, uh, and our split behavior for one or multiple stations. We also added a, um, uh, file list selection tool to improve the user interface when you manage importing the content. So to be specific, I'll go to tools and media import. And this is a, this, this window is completely redesigned. It's much nicer, cleaner. Mm -hmm. uh, so on the left-hand side, you pick the folder you want to import from, and we immediately show the list of files in that folder right here. And you can choose whether you want to include subfolders or not. If you choose yes, we will also go through all the subfolders in that folder to include the files in that one too. And uh, on the right-hand side, uh, you just pick uh, what uh, is the asset type for the new yep. content to be loaded into, whether you want to do any matching, uh, perform marks analysis, gives you automatic trims, yep. uh, segue mark, intro mark. Um, if you want to set a kill date, you know, I talk about other fields that are station specific. So if I pick this station, for example, I can also set um, specific start and um, nice. you know window split behavior things like this, and if I can do that from multiple stations in one shot. Uh, going back to this list because this is completely new. This list did we, we've had a flavor of this previously, but this list is completely new. Uh, there are a few things that are not necessarily obvious. You can, for example, well, actually, it shows the contents of the folder you selected, but you can mm -hmm. uh, delete. And you're not deleting the files really from that folder. What you're it's doing is yeah, it's just a list of things you want to import. So if there are certain files you don't want to import, you can just uh, get rid of them by simply deleting them. Or I can do it through right click, remove files, select mm -hmm. multiple uh, as well. And I selected too many, so I'm going to hit refresh to back, go back to where I started. So I'm not deleting the files, just hmm. the item from this import list if I don't want to import it. Now, how do I know if I want to import it? Well, we've added, it's kind of a bit of a hidden feature, but you can actually addition, you can listen hmm. uh, to that piece of audio. And uh, you can either do it through right-click, addition. Oh, wow. Um, or you can use a feature we've had in Zeta for years, and that's, you know, if you have a mouse that has a, a middle-click button, um, you can use that button to start, start additioning uh, that piece of audio. It's actually... Uh, something that I don't know if people know, but it's it's very cool because anywhere in Zeta, if you hit middle click, I'm mean, now I'm hitting it on the in the owner yep. module. Now I'm hitting in the in the logs module. So anywhere I middle click, I can immediately start addition. It gets loaded into this tiny tiny additioning module at the top, mm -hmm. and you can see what's being you know you can listen to any content in Zeta through a single click. And that was our goal to give users easy access to yeah. addition. Uh, the, the the content and you can click here to seek through that element as well. So this worked throughout Zeta, but we also made it work in this module even for content that is not imported into the system. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So you can middle click. It gets loaded here into this micro bar we call it, and you can click around to seek. Now wow. it's really cool. Um, we've had this additional module. I'm not sure if people know about this, um, but you can open this. Additioning module. Let's say you want to do some more serious work. I can actually dock it to this mm -hmm. uh, media import window, just like this. And when I addition, it gets loaded uh, in a form of waveform. Wow! So if the tiny guy in the top right corner is just too small to interact with, it's a little like a some micro bar. You can make it bigger by lo loading a addition module, and you can click here and seek. Uh, I've, Ivan and Jeff on Facebook now are like. Middle wheel audition. I can audition files outside yep. of the Z environment. 
Yep, you totally can. And so, uh, and, and uh, be, like I said, we have this tight little additioning module always in the top right corner. But if you yep. want a bigger, more capable uh, module, it's right here in modules and you can dock it to meet any port tool. And then you can, you know, middle click any item and listen to it and uh, decide if you want to import it or not. So, and yep. then you can, you no, know, I don't really want to load this one and this one. So uh, that's uh, that's how that works. And when you're ready, ready, go ahead. Uh, when you're ready, you just hit, hit the import button, and all the files that are in this in this list on the left will get loaded into the system. I was gonna say, if you're like me and you're working on some kind of piece of audio, and you have kind of you know underscore one, underscore two, final, mm -hmm. final one, final two, final yeah. three, you can see exactly which one you want to import uh, by yep. previewing. Yep. And by the way, it's another point. You know, I always say that is very flexible, right? And it's a, it's a good exercise here to show that even just by auditioning audio, there's multiple ways you can achieve the same exact result. If you just want to work quick on the fly, we have the quick audition in the top right. If you're looking to really, let's say you're adding 50 plus elements, you want to make sure that everything looks okay, you can get the audition module and visualize everything there too. So again, a lot of flexible workflows in regards to Zeta. All right. And when you're ready, Hit the import media button. There you go. And we start loading your content. Okay. So uh, moving on from uh, a new media import. And by the way, we're here, just in case you're tuning in just now, if you're like Philip over here, just checking in, we're here with uh, Martin Blazik, our uh, Zeta product manager, reviewing Zeta 521.1, brand new features, which is available right now. You can schedule an upgrade with support. We're just kind of going through some of the really cool new features. So. Um, we did the media importer, and up next we have. Next we have. We're gonna look at uh, our metadata card a little bit more. Uh, we added uh, some functionality related to cue points, and uh, just to quick recap, what a cue point is. Well, it's a kind of a command on the audio. If you want to execute certain operation at a with, within at a certain position in the audio, uh, we call them cue points. We've had cue points for years now, but we mm -hmm. added a couple of features to cue points. Well, first of all, we've Give them their own tab. Uh, coupons used to be in this marking tool list uh, at bur buried at the very bottom. So uh, the, the access to it was a little bit, you know, was a little bit hard to access. So we said, well, why don't we just give them a dedicated tab? Mm -hmm. And so when you add a cue point, you or when you work with cue points, you create a cue point and you can have a, you know, a list of uh, predefined cue points. If that's something you use frequently, you can uh, use that or you can create a custom one. I'm going to call it Nate's. <laughs> viewpoint. Now, let's say at this position in the audio, we want to, I don't know, load certain uh, bank and hotkeys. It's that capable. Mm -hmm. uh, open bank, specify your bank, and uh, hit OK. And here's my cue point. Then anytime we hit this position in the audio, we make sure the hotkey module uh, loads a specific uh, bank. And like we have hundreds of these commands, so we can do crazy mm -hmm. stuff with these commands. And so we can launch them all through cue points. Now, yep. so the feature is um, when you actually import uh, new audio on an asset, that's uh, that's a big deal for an asset. So we blow away your, your trim and uh, trim and trim out segue, all the previous marks, because obviously mm -hmm. the marks are very specific to the audio. So we analyze the audio mm -hmm. and uh, based on the analysis of the new audio apply new marking points. But the cue points would be blown away as part of that as well. So if you yeah. wanted to persist the cue points, you really could not. You have to, if you keep on attaching new audio to the same asset and wanting to persist the cue points, you could not do that. Well, not, now you can. We have this, if you right click on the cue point, there is now this locked option right here. And you pick it and we put this little padlock icon in here so signifying that this cue point will survive when you attach a new audio uh to this to this asset another example too i always like to share like the now playing export right or the live metadata export if you have that a news talk format and you have let's say that reoccurring you know one minute news segment you can say at let's say 59 seconds change the rds to say we have traffic and weather in 10 seconds right and obviously the news cart always changes but yep. you can lock it in at you know 59 seconds or 50 seconds rather and say, you know, lock in the XU commands, you know, change the RDS. So that is exactly the use case that we're trying to address with this feature. 
Yeah. That you have this really frequent cool. laminated <clears throat> audio and assets, uh, but you could not really persist the cue points. Well, now you can with this version. Um, All right. Okay, I'll, I'll let's uh, stick on a uh, on the on the metadata card just a little bit longer. Um, if um, if you use volume points, it's a, it's a means of adjusting the volume of the audio at any given point. If you need to make something quieter, um, you would create a, a cue point and um, you know achieve this, for example. Mm -hmm. So the problem with cue points was that um, historically they've been pretty. Uh, hard to interact with. You had to go through a lot of context menus, like right click, there's a volume point. It gets added mm -hmm. somewhere. If you wanted to remove it, you need to uh, right click again and remove. It wasn't particularly intuitive. It was a lot of clicks uh, to get you where you wanted. So we improved that experience quite a bit. And uh, well, the, the core of this is that you use double click or can use double click to easily add or remove a cue point. So I can just do this and uh, easily you know, change mm -hmm. the shape of that curve, of that envelope. And so simply a clicking and double clicking, I mean, not cl double clicking, you can mm -hmm. easily add and remove a, a volume point at, at, at any point. You can also drag the line, move that up and down. Um, so this, this was um, improved quite a bit, as you can see, because before it was a lot of clicking to get things done. And now I can, uh, now it's much smoother to operate. And since we are here on metadata card, uh, I wanted to point you to this little bottom right corner with the plus and minus buttons. Uh, it's it's used for zooming, and we've had a mouse wheel based zooming for a while, which is a common way of zooming on waveforms through an audio editor. So you can absolutely use mouse wheel to zoom in and out. But if you don't have access to a mouse <clears throat> or mouse with a mouse wheel, you know you could do this one as well to zoom um, around the audio and pad pen and uh, but we also now have these buttons um that you know make it even more obvious yeah, that you yeah can... absolutely easier navigation yeah absolutely and uh, and uh, especially the vertical navigation that wasn't very obvious how that could be done in the past so we all integrate into this ui so if you want to and this is not changing the volume of the audio it's just kind of zooming yeah. uh, vertically if you want to see you take a look greater detail in certain portion of the audio uh, you can magnify it vertically as well. And uh, once you're done with it, if you want to like, go back to the beginning, you hit a little X, yep. and we take you to where you started. Uh, I know some users accidentally you know, click and drag the view or something like that. There's a nice little reset option there for you too. So, Yep. Okay, continuing further. <clears throat> I know you had specific interest in this new macro functionality. Uh, mm. you, you did mention it to me uh, in, in the notes that we should cover this. And so... <laughs> You know, it, again, it's more of an engineering thing. Um, it's uh, many use macros. Typically, macro is this little wrapper, a container for execute commands. If you want to execute multiple things in in in, in one shot, um, it's uh, it's uh, you do that through macros. You can then call it for a macro from a hotkey. You can call it from from a from a log. You can call it through from GPIO. There are many ways how you can launch a macro. Uh, so let me just find a. Uh, some macro I want to use for the purposes of this presentation. Let's say this one. So it only has a single execute command, but like I say, you can dump many more commands into this. Mm -hmm. So what what is new here is that when you actually go and edit the macro, we have three options here in the, at the bottom. Before we only had two. It's the way that we execute the macro. It, it's about how it how it interacts when the macro is fired, especially from uh, from sequencer log. Um, how it interacts with the surrounding events, and uh, and the default synchronous means it's it's executed in line. Meaning, when an event ends, or specifically when we had a segue mark on the event, we execute the macro. And if the macro has some normal, if it's just command, it it just done immediately, like super quick, and we move on mm -hmm. to the next event. But you may put put a pause event and something that takes time. You can even play an audio, honestly, from a macro. You can do almost anything with a macro. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> anything that takes time, is it executed synchronously or asynchronously, which in English really means, does it, is it in line of the log or kind of a separate, does it run in parallel uh, with, with that log? So synchronous means it's executed in line, meaning the next event in the log does not get fired until the macro is done. 
Mm -hmm. what synchronous means. The asynchronous means, well, fire the macro on the side, but move on with your life, you know, continue uh, executing the log. So if the macro has uh, commands and pauses and more commands and more pauses and can, you know, runs for a minute for whatever reason you need, uh, it runs kind of on the side while the log proceeds. That's the asynchronous execution. Now, there's this super weird new way of executing <laughs> in a asynchronous manner. And we thought it was, uh, you know, worthwhile to put this little warning here to tell the user what it actually means, what's the purpose of the setting, uh, how is it different than the normal asynchronous. Mm -hmm. And, and in, in, in few words, it really means, well, executing asynchronous meaning run it in parallel, run it on the side along with the log, but um, also play through the macro. What this means is that the, the macro can change many things. It can change the mode of sequencer, for example, it could call mm -hmm. another macro that can change mode. Uh, it can change shift, which changes mode. There's so many things that could potentially happen in a macro that we don't really know whether it's safe to fire the event after macro uh, or not, because maybe the mode is going to change to manual and it would be wrong to fire the event after the macro. Mm. So now the problem is, so we really normally, if you want to play it safe, use one of the other two options. Uh, especially if you really care about uh, a mode change that can, you know, stop the execution of future events, uh, you would use typically the synchronous. So the problem with that is the macro may take just a little bit of time, and we show that in this in this tooltip here, um, based on the pauses, etc. And mm -hmm. so, based on the number of commands you have in the macro, it can a little bit delay the audio. If you care about super precise audio, fine tuned, low latency audio execution you don't want the macro to interfere with the timing of that audio. And so we're basically saying, hey, if you think it's safe to just fire, move on to the next audio without any interruption, without any glitch, at a low, you know, at a high precision, low latency, execute the audio and just, you know, ignore or don't worry about the mode changes in the macro, use this option. So it's it's really for that engineering purpose. If you do change mode, we will fire that audio because all you care about is if you all you care about is low latency firing through the macros. This is the option we want to use. But then make sure you don't change mode because we will fire the audio, you know, regardless of the execution or without waiting for the execution of that macro. Yeah, absolutely. Makes so sense. It's engineering, it's an engineering tool, but again, you know, clients have very specific demands on low latency audio uh, playback. And so this is the way to get that done. Yeah, let's try throwing some some engineering stuff there too for everybody, so. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. All right, All right. next. Uh, By the way, guys, I'm trying to get you out of here by 10 minutes or so, just so we know. So if you got questions for uh, for Martin or for myself or whoever, let us know. We are definitely here um, to answer those questions for you as we go and review the brand new features in Zeta 521.1 available right now. Uh, what do we have next? I'll have a, I'll, I'll, I have a brief mention of Startup Manager, some optimization of Startup Manager side, some of the processes in the Startup Manager was this little guy in the bottom right corner that um, runs uh, hidden uh, or background process in the system. We optimize that the processes don't really need to run anymore if that if that machine doesn't okay. really do anything specific to that process. So it's just another nice optimization. So now if you open Startup Manager, many things actually don't run, and that's fine. That's expected. Uh, you did mention that you, we should probably bring up the ability to uh, change the theme again. Do you want to? Yes, I was going to say. How do you feel about themes? I love the new themes. I mean, I'm I'm a big dark mode guy. I have both my G selector and Zeta in dark mode. So when you guys introduced that, I was like, sold. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> right, and and I'm I'm with you, and uh, I like them too. Uh, I do use dark theme as well. I've had a minor customization, so this is the one I'm using here. Mm -hmm. You had changed some color accents a little bit. But we've also heard people saying, hey, you know, it would be nice to uh, kind of have the opposite of the dark, have a light theme. And so we said, well, why don't we try it? And so we now have a Zeta light. Yep. Pick that option. I can save and bang. Check this out. Very Every cool. Everything flips to, uh, to bright. So based on the environment you work in, this may be a more suitable uh, skin to use on your Zeta system. And the if you're a big bright color person with contrast, I want to bring in house hunters in here. But it's uh, if you like bright colors, and they definitely pop uh, with the white theme on here, which is really really cool. Yep, yep. And so uh, and because all our themes are customizable, you can start a new theme. Say, hey, I want to use the light theme as a, as the basis. 
mm-hmm. from my theming. And then you go and customize all your colors. You absolutely can do it. So all the colors you see here can be customized further. Uh, uh, but this is our kind of a default. But because I'm the dark guy, I'll move yep. to where I'm. I like being, which is this one. So we have, just to review, we have the traditional metal, right? That's the old yep. traditional uh, yep. Zeta yep. skin. Then we have uh, the Zeta Dark and Zeta Light. Yep, those are the core ones, and all of them can be customized further. Right, Khalid? Looks cool. Awesome. Okay. Moving on. Well, let me just go back to my theme that I want to use. <laughs> cover that. And uh, to go, oh man, so many yes. things we've done, done in, 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 in Zeta to go. Uh, so let me just go right here. Uh, so first of all, I do want to mention that you know, we've been writing and maintaining the help document, not only for the main product, but also for the, uh, also for the, uh, for the to go product. Now, the way you access help is you just, it's a context sensitive help, meaning if you had F1, we yep. show you the, the 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 help for that specific area of the system. Now that didn't really work in in to go well until now. So if mm-hmm. I'm in the logs module and I hit F1, you show the help for the logs module. And if I'm, uh, you know, even when you're hovering in menu options, like uh, what is this? Like manage local cache audio. Hit F1. Well, we tell you what it is. That's so cool. So you don't even, you don't even need to open that window. It's just simply navigating through these options here in the, um, at the top. Hit F1. And we show you the context sensitive help for that very area. And if you watch any of my RCS lives, you know that I am a big believer. I cannot say enough how amazing a great resource the F1 dynamic help is. Uh, shout out to Teresa, who does those. Um, mm-hmm. And they're just, just such a wealth of information. And just as you can see, every aspect of both Zeta and G Selector, if you're not familiar with what the purpose is, and you can hover over it and you can identify it, hit F1. And you can see and read up on what that particular workflow is. It's it's just extremely helpful. Yep. Next thing uh, in the logs module, we have these fix and stretch columns. And some users use these. Well, it, they use by sequencer. Fix is used to decide whether event can be dropped to accommodate the timing in that log segment. segment stretch and signifies whether the event can be stretched mm-hmm. or squeezed to accommodate the timing. So speed up, slow down just a little bit. Can we do it on this event? So uh, we had, it's it's something we've had in the product for many years. It's just the changing those settings was a little bit cumbersome. And you had to go through the properties and uh, it was like many clicks away. Mm-hmm. You change it eventually. Well, we, that still works and you can still use the old way if, you, if, you, if that's what you prefer and if you're familiar with. However, you can also toggle it directly from the logs module. And uh, you click that icon and you pick the new option and it's gone. And you click and turn it back on. Same thing with uh, stretching. If you want to enable stretching certain events, it's a click away. Now notice I I switch back to normal <laughs> Zeta, but my point is really this now also works in in Zeta to go. So this has been added to both to go and regular Zeta system. We can easily manipulate the fixed and stretch properties. And by the way, we've also have settings on the station level where the specific event should be fixed by default or stretched by default and um that was supported in the main zeta user interface but in zeta to go it was not and so now it is so if you insert using zeta to go we will observe the default fix and default stretch setting for that station and that asset type and by the way all of these zeta to go features i think it needs to be said martin and a, a big kudos to you and your team these are like really covid friendly workflows we're talking about here these all stem from you know when covid first happened you know we we listened to you and all the things you're trying to do remotely and yes you know i always say zeta go is made to enhance not re- replace the zeta experience but really when covid hit we had to start incorporating some of those workflows and you and your team were phenomenal in the sense that we we do a list of things we can do. We implemented it, and we're going to show you the voice tracking thing as well. And these are just some of the Zeta to go features you can see where we needed to have some more advanced functionality. But it was a direct result of our client saying, "I need this in Zeta to go due to COVID." So you can start seeing some of those fruits of those labor uh, in this version in Zeta five twenty one point one. Yep, indeed. And so uh, we're in Zeta to go. We're in a browser, and sometimes it's really hard to tell because the we try to make the interface as similar as possible to regular Zeta. So I have to think twice 
sometimes. Like, hey, this is normal, <laughs> especially when like right, like full screen in a browser. Hey, hey, which one I'm using now? Quick, yeah. now. <laughs> you can't see. Yeah, absolutely. It's like which one is it? So this is this is a browser version of Zeta, and so we've uh, enhanced the metadata card here as well. The marking tool specifically, the zooming. You know, we saw in regular yep. Zeta is here now as well. Uh, so you can. You know, zoom in, zoom out, both horizontally and vertically. Reset or zoom. Turn back. Yep. And again, we have this little bar here uh, that you can use to uh, zoom in and and pan around that audio. And uh, while we're here, another common thing that's uh, very typical in audio editors use a spacebar to start playing the audio, and the spacebar again to stop playing. Well, that wasn't working in to go until now. So now it is. You can use a spacebar to start and stop the audio. So it's again super cool. Uh, when setting up marking points, you want to listen to it real quick. You don't have to hit these these buttons. Hit the button here at the bottom, like you know, use mouse. You just use your space bar. It's much more mm -hmm. much faster, and that, that works in Zeta too. And it's, in Zeta, it's worked for many years, but we've just added the same functionality in Zeta to go. Now the I left the best for the last. I know what that yeah. is, right? The voice tracking. Before you say that, I just want to quickly show a quick question by Dave on here who mentioned he wanted to say, is there an option to uppercase all the artists in Zeta? He's got a problem that once an artist is created, for example, Coldplay, right? It's He wants all capitals in Coldplay, and that's probably because the artist value is saved with a capital C. Everything else is lowercase. Uh, I would reach out, Dave, to support. We got some SQL scripts that we can do to make that easier for you. They can help you guide you in the right direction, just so you know. But I want to make sure I answer Dave's questions before we showcase the brand new voice tracking tool in Zeta to go. All right. And this is a huge feature. This is a big development. We spent a lot of time on this particular enhancement. It's uh, we completely redesigned the voice tracker and segue editor. You know, we no longer have, you know, IVT, what we used to call it. Uh, internet voice tracking is really so much more now than internet voice tracking. So we have this, we call it a voice tracker slash segue editor module here at the bottom of the screen. And we revamped this, we rewritten this from the ground up. It's a brand new thing. It's so much yeah. more capable than the old Treat one was. This as a new voice tracking module. Absolutely. Yep. And and a new, new segue editor as well. So it really started by clients saying, hey, if I want to change a trim, uh, can I do it? And you couldn't do that in the old one. You, it was very, very limited. Can you change volume points? No, you could not that do. You could not do that in the old one. It was very, very just record a VT and, and move on with your life. Mm -hmm. Well, now we've added tons and tons of functionality. Again, we try to enumerate that in the release notes. So this has well, that's why it has it has this long paragraph right here. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's like, let me just show you. So uh, I I started by, well, first of all, I think you're going to notice. Uh, the waveform looks so much better than they used to. It's it's, mm -hmm. and the reason for that is we use the same data uh, that Zeta uses to show the waveform, so it's uh, much more accurate, much more precise, and much faster to pull that. In fact, if you've pulled that waveform before and you go back to that event, and I'm just gonna let it generate for uh, this song. Uh, yeah, we go gotta, back. Yeah. Yeah, we got our Zoom going, we got the restream going, all that. Yeah. Yep. And so, yeah, maybe I need to flip this mode. That's the thing. So we need to make sure this one is sticky. So, yep. but it's in instant. Once you've done it once, it's there. Now, another thing you may notice, uh, the part of the waveform is brighter and the part is darker. And the reason for that is we don't really, uh, in Zetico, because we're in a browser, we don't have access to all the audio in your Zeta system right away. So we just download uh, what we call a head and tail. Mm -hmm. And it's just a little bit, little piece of audio, uh, and so uh, so that you can you know do your additioning thing or segue adjustment. Typically, you just deal with a few seconds at the end of the audio or the beginning mm -hmm. of the audio, right? And so the bright part indicates the part of the audio you actually have. So when you hit play, it really only st you only start hearing the audio for the bright part. And so so we we're just saying, hey, don't be scared if you hear silence. That's expected. We only have that little snippet of the audio. But if you need more for whatever reason, you can right click and say, hey, get more audio. And a few seconds later, bang, you get a little bit more of audio. It's like, yeah, well, I still need a little bit more. Right click, get more audio. And don't forget, the reason we do this is for performance, right? Because yeah, we're talking yep. about bandwidth here. So if you are, Absolutely. let's say, streaming and running multiple things and working from home and you have, need more audio, we don't want to download all that audio and then have you work. We want you to work. And if you need more audio, we give you an option to add more audio. Yep. 
And so uh, same thing here on the bottom track. So which are tracking where you want to get more audio, uh, you can do it. And especially if the, if the audio is short, we just always get the full thing. But if it's, you know, three, four minute song, you just want to get a small, small, small chunk of it. And so, Mark, do me a favor, just just bring up that voice track window a little taller, just because we have you and I are blocking just the very bottom of that sine wave. So oh, just make the oh, voice really? tracker bigger. Okay. Um, well, how about is this better now? I think it's better. All right, great, fantastic. Yep. All righty. So we can either get more audio, just say, hey, just give me the full thing. And you say, get full audio, and that's when we download the entire thing. But like I said, it's going to take just a little bit longer because for performance reasons, we're going to doing this over internet, you know, firewalls and whatnot. So so that's one thing. That's just one thing uh, I wanted to mention. Next, you can easily, if you want to add new marking points to this event, uh, set trim. Uh, you just right-click and set that trim. Um, just like you would in a in a regular regular Zeta, you can adjust that trim very easily by uh, you know or remove it. Right click, set trim in. Yep. Right click. Yep. Exactly. So it's all done through right click, uh, setting these, setting and removing these markers. And I uh, we talk about volume points. Let me just get to a different event here. I don't want to save these changes. No. And while you load that up, Martin, we're going to do uh, last call for questions here because I know that we're on a slight delay in the regular feeds. If you've got any questions for Martin or myself, Dave, or uh, whomever, Philip or Ivan, any questions, let us know we're here. I know there's a slight delay. I want to get those questions in now before we lose them. Yep. So same exercise, adding and removing volume points. Again, you can do it through double click like you can do in Zeta or uh, through the context menu. So the really plenty of magic is in this context menu now uh, where you can um, easily add, add the markers, whether it's a regular mark. If you want to, hey, I don't want to duck this song here in the end, you can just auto fade, remove that, and uh, hit your safe. And if you don't want to perform the auto fade, for example, so many of the functionalities actually access through this uh, context menu. So, like for example, Henrik would sort of love this. I know he is. Um, the fact if you're voice tracking now, you do a break. You maybe you hit it too quickly, or you weren't paying attention. We now have that trim in function. We have that trim out function. We have the volume points. So, in case you have a awkward, you know, uh, element you're talking into, you can control some volume points in there. So, if you are an internet voice tracker, it's internet or your remote, really is what I should say. If you're a remote voice tracker, this is just the coolest thing. It's going to save you so much time. Um, just because again, it's it's treat the regular Zeta now, but it's in Zeta to go, which is just huge. So I decided to move it to the top because there you go. Thank the you. Yeah, part perfect. of the window was being being blocked. So I thought that this may be a little better if you just flip, uh, flip, flip the module. Um, so uh, I hope I hope you see this better. This is great. Yep, so, yep, yep. So this is what I was talking about. You can uh, like easily uh, double click to add those volume points, which. You could not previously even do. There was no access to volume points. Well, now not only you can see them, but you can also add them uh, today. That's awesome. That's great stuff. I, right. I, I, I like the you know. I especially did a. We don't. We cannot really hear the audio here, but it's uh, if you just want to chop off the you know. There's a bad beginning of the song. You want to chop it off. You can easily do that. Manipulate the trim. Uh, and uh, do a little bit of fade in, and then uh, align that with uh, your previous song, just like this. It sounds very cool. Yeah, I would no, if you play this chunk of the audio too. Yeah, again, the world is your oyster on that. And as you know, regular Zeta, this is—it's just—I can't say enough of this great feature. So awesome. Um, let's see here. So we got about a couple seconds of a 30 second warning for last call for questions here. Um, so anything else you wanted to mention, Martin, um, in regards to 521 of one? Well, I'll just say this, that we've been through, uh, three or four months of beta, uh, beta testing and beta sites. So it's got a lot of text uh, testing before our general release, which is about, uh, about a week old now. So, uh, um, it's, now is the time to grab this version. This is the version that we want to be using. We want our clients to use, uh, at least for the re rest of the year. We're working on the next major version, 5.21.2. It will be in beta uh, about mid-October. Mm -hmm. uh, so if there, if anybody you know, on this call is interested in um, using the latest and greatest cutting-edge code, uh, there will be opportunity in October. 
But outside of that, this is the version to go to uh, for your best Zeta experience. And I will say, too, just to kind of wrap this up for uh, 521.1, you know, you mentioned earlier in the beginning of this uh, this session that we have, a, you see WAN optimizations in there, right? A lot of stuff. But, you know, the performance aspect of this version is huge. This is a nice little kind of performance increase in the Zeta experience. So that's something to note as well. So you might see a, you might see a slight Zeta performance bump in there as well. Or even not so slight. And this is, I think we found a very good, good mix of new features, enhancements, and performance optimizations. So it's... You know, everybody's wins here, and we get a lot of nice new features along with the system performs even faster now. And uh, I'll, I, I see your question, Dave. I'll save it and take it offline. <laughs> Dave was asking about some uh, shoutcast and icecast features inside of Zeta, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll take I'll, I'll chat you offline on that one, Dave. Um, all right, last last call for questions here. We've got about 10 seconds delay. But Martin, thank you so much uh, for spending the time and showing us these great new features in Zeta 521.1. And as we said, it's available right now. You can reach out to RCS support and book your upgrade or reach out to whoever your local RCS uh, representative is. And we can get you in touch with some of these latest and greatest features. And uh, again, Martin, thank you so much for spending the time today. We really appreciate it. It was my pleasure. Thank you, Nate. Awesome. See everybody next week. Uh, we're going to do some Acquira stuff as part of RCS Live again every Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern, right here on Facebook, Twitch, Periscope, YouTube, all of that good stuff. I'll see you next Thursday. Have a great week.